Hey, what's going on, you guys? Let's welcome you guys to the channel. It's your boy Big Dog back with another one take review. Today, I got one for Euphoria Season 2, Episode 6. Now, y'all gonna have to give me a pass today because I cut off my hair and it took a lot of my confidence with it, as well as a couple of brain cells. So, if I get the fumbling and tripling and forget some stuff, y'all gonna have to give me a pass. Just talk, We'll talk about it another time. Give me three years to grow my shit back. But, but let's get straight into this damn episode with uh, Rue trying to get a snot award. Okay, I, I think she she read uh, 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 Viola Davis books on how to win awards. And now she locked up the Emmy last week. She ain't need this. She ain't need this. Now she now she just flexing on everybody. Okay, got the. I said, damn, Rue, clean that. You just and then she just wiped it on her hand and just uh, just went back to sitting. I said, get some Germex, baby. It's COVID out here. We in a pandemic, girl. Do do something about that. God damn. Now. She was really going through it. I love Zendaya's acting in this opening scene. Her just like reflecting on some of the stuff that she w remembers. Granted, she doesn't remember a lot of the things she said, but she know she did say some horrible things. One of the things she do remember is how she talked to Ali. And uh, he's one of the first people she calls up. And I think she was like with, uh, 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 withholding that piece of candor from herself until she was able to make certain amends with like certain people she know that she hurt because she, like we're obviously last week we saw she just said dumpster fires literally everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Granted, some of those things already had like the match lit and she just knocked the some bitch in there and it just exploded. You know what I'm saying? Especially with like the whole Cassie situation. But for the most part, it's just hey. You know, Rue was still out here causing a lot of fucking chaos. And she's, like, trying to make amends for that. Her mom was really, really worried about it. her. Her mother just seems to be, like, the person. I have to take care of my child. She, and I like how this episode played out with the whole mother aspect and, and, and how her mother is so caring. And But we also have to sh we showed another side. Like, hey, man, I understand that this girl is, like, going through some stuff. But at the same time, you got to kind of, like, check her. And, and, like, you can be mad at her. Okay? It, it's not just, hey, let's cuddle and, and, and cradle Rue. No. It's like we got to also call Rue a fucking crackhead. All right? That's that just what it is. I, I know Rue is not necessarily just on crack that we've seen. But Rue's doing everything under the damn sun. So, I ain't no tell. She probably experimented with crack a little bit. But I like the group making a call to Ali and Ali immediately forgiving her. I, I like that part, you know, because one, he's seen this before and he was mad at her when she when she used some vital information that he gave her, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and confidence and she used that against him. But he knew that like, hey, this, the kid is trying to get better. OK, I, and I've, I've experienced this before. I've probably done it to people myself. So, hey, let me let me forgive this person because I think that journey that they have to make ultimately is still on them. You know what I'm saying? So let me not be something to like hold them back at all. You feel me? So I, I like Ali I, I solid because he still came to the house, you know what I'm saying, cracking jokes and shit. As soon as he post up in that bed, tell mama, like, hey, mama, get your fine ass up out of here because your hands probably still smell like shit because you've been watching her little funk ass. That's how I like it because that's how I probably would approach people. That's me. You feel me? I'm the person who I need to break down those barriers you have. Uh, uh, those defense mechanisms. I need you to feel easy with me in the house. I need you to feel like you're able to say anything to me. Because if you're guarded the whole time, you know what I'm saying, we, it's going to be pretty shaky. And that's pretty much how Gia was. And I think Ali peeked at it the moment he walked in the house. And he's like, okay, let me let me get a little moment with a little one. Because she's been going through some shit too. And I don't think, the obviously, we see that Rue's mama really haven't like been noticing that. That shit is taking a, a, a toll on her. Her sister's constantly want to kill herself. Her mother's always stressing. And her dad, well, it was her dad who died too. You know what I'm saying? So I like that Ali was like, you know, trying to talk to him, but not pushing it too far. Like he was, don't get me wrong, he was bold, but he was never like pushing the conversation too much to where like it felt invasive. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I like that. Uh, and I like I, I, one more thing that I really, really enjoyed that Ruth said is like, um, I think a lot of people would call her a bad person. And she said, she said the world, uh, most people would think the world would be a better place without me in it. But she said another thing, everybody, it shouldn't be reduced to the worst thing that they've ever done. Because I said this before, I don't know if you've seen the Instagram post. I was just like, yo, if everybody walked around with a fucking sign on their head saying with the worst thing that they've ever done in their life, nobody would ever come out the fucking house. We are bigger, bigger than the worst thing our worst moments okay people can change don't get me wrong you can't just let somebody constantly take advantage of you if they show you like a certain way but like i hate the the fact that like we are so past forgiveness in this day it's like hey counsel this person this person a person does one thing bad and that's who they are for the rest of their life 
You know what I'm saying? I, I hate that whole that whole mindset because I, to me it's not progressive at all. It, you know what I'm saying? It's regressive. You know, let me chill out, boy. Let me. Boy, I might need to preach. Boy, let me. Can I get an amen? Amen. In the back. That's all good. I don't, I don't, I don't need it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but anyway, then we transition over to that boy Nate. Nate over here chilling for the most part until he's realized Cassidy done called him 38 fucking times and Matter hasn't called him once. He like, oh, shit done hit the fan. Speaking of shit hitting the fan, that damn piss is still on the floor. Somebody clean that up. Get Aaron ass to do it because y'all don't got him doing nothing else. Yeah, y'all over here talking about the boy behind his damn back. Sweet put some Marshall back on the market. Probably from the start. Slanging that thing all left and right. You know what I'm saying? About the brain. Dudes in the highs in and out. You know what I'm saying? She's like, hey, man, I used to work this thing back in high school. I'm finna get back. Start doing some goddamn coochie exercises or something. Get this thing back. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. But I did like the moment between uh, Marshall and Nate uh, where, like, it was just a, a lot of back and forth. He was constantly getting frustrated at her, but she was just pretty much calling him out and like analyzing, like, "Hey, man, you were you were such a sweet kid. What what happened to you? You know what, I mean? what, what happened? It was a time where it just it just changed, and I never quite understood. I mean, your father, like, we know what the fuck happened, but she doesn't. And I don't, even though they're much more comfortable with each other, very very comfortable because she let her son just drink that brown early in the morning. You know what I'm saying? But like. I like the fact that he doesn't just completely open up to her right now. You know what I'm saying? Because he's been, you know, he's gone through some stuff. Hey, don't get me wrong. Make piece shit. You know what I'm saying? Throw the bitch out the out of roof. You know what I'm saying? Empire State Building. Something. Wet his car up. Put the switches on it. Hit his shit. You know what I'm, I'm just saying. But I don't. I wouldn't expect him to open up to his mama right now. You know, especially with what, like, you know what I'm saying? All the stuff that he's seen. Uh, but she, she, she's not a fool. Marsha not a fool. This is the most we've seen Marsha talk, and she just, and we know, and from this scene, we know that she been peeping game. She know her son ain't shit. She know her son choked up mad. She was actually proud of him. Like, yeah, I, look, 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 girl called me a cunt. I'm happy. I was like, yeah, that's my baby. Go snatch her. Go snatch her up. You know, don't let this get your mama. I'm like, damn. Hey, what a little, what a little Cassie girl. What a little blonde hair girl. Hey, bring her around more. She don't like Maddie because she think Maddie, if Maddie ever got pregnant by Nate, she's like, hey, she's the type of girl to keep the baby to spite her. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, she has that mother's intuition. You feel me? Like, like certain shit she just don't rock with. And I like that about it. I'm like, damn, this is the most we have seen for Sweet Pussy Marsha. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, we saw, you know what I'm saying? Putting that head on somebody or, you know, putting that meat on them. You know what I'm saying? Make motherfucker come. Oh, my bad. My bad. My bad. Somebody tell Marsha. I said, what's up? I ain't got nothing else to do right now. I'm saying it's Valentine's Day tomorrow. I, I, anyway, uh, going over to uh, the, 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 the Howard. The, hold up. I think it's the Howard household. Uh, Cassie, crazy than a son of a bitch. So crazy to the point that, that her mama told my girl, Alex, hey, go hide the knives because your sister on the fucking rampage right now. The bitch might kill herself. She's like, do you really think she'll do that? Yes, because the bitch ain't trying to kill herself with a fucking corkscrew. And while she's constantly, she don't want to take responsibility for a goddamn thing. It's, still, it's everybody else's fault. Uh, they weren't actually together. Uh, that's her That's her only thing. She know everything about the time zones and everything else and, and, and this and that. They weren't together. They weren't talking. They weren't boyfriend and girlfriend. Do you re not remember, bitch, that for one, he was friends with your ex-boyfriend. Mm. He was the boyfriend of your best friend. Like, there is no justification for what you did, Cassie. And she just, and I love, oh, the part I love the most. When Lexi just looking at her down there on the grind crying, Lexi's like, bro, why did, what do you see in Nate? Why are you defending him so much? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't really know him. What the fuck you mean you didn't know him, dumbass? You know him all of your life. You know what kind of piece of shit he was. Because Maddie was literally telling, she's your best friend. She was telling you all the horrible, horrific shit. He was doing her. But now you you call her amnesia? He, no, don't, he called her at a time where she just needed somebody. But for the most part, we knew Cassie. We know how Cassie rolled. And Cassie, Cassie going to slain that. This, Cassie got off on a goddamn uh, the, little, the little horse in season one, bro. You feel me? Old dude told her in that room. 
You know what I'm saying? When he put a thumb in her mouth or something like I think it's something like that happened. He was just like, bro, you think you're a good girl? And I think a lot, I was kind of feeling bad for Cassie when he was saying, I'm like, damn, bro. She might, she might, no. Cassie going. Cassie going. Pop, pop, pop that pussy, boy. Come on now. And, and that's just, that's just who she is. She just needs, she just want to be loved. She just want to be loved. I just want somebody to pay attention to her. That's all the, that's just all she want, man. She ain't no fucking good. And I look, I'm so happy my girl Lexi got on the ass. Like, hold up. This why, this why you told on Fesco. Oh, you ain't. Sh Lexi, Lexi let her have it. Now, don't get me wrong, now. Cassie came back with a fucking, with a vengeance. Cassie said, hold up, man. Why the fuck we all on my case? And we just get a rule pass. It's like my mom was like, rule, rule done been through some shit. Her dad died. Our dad just walked out and never came back. You feel me? I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, well, we'll do be sliding by with some shit. Then she hit my girl Lexi in the gut. She said, Lexi. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. She said, hold up. You want to get on me talking about how Nate used to talk about me? Ru don't do nothing but mistreat you. And if y'all have not noticed, Lexi has been in so many different scenes where we see Ru, whether they're talking or not. I think it was like it was meant for like you to see when you see Ru in certain scenes, you would just see Lexi there. OK, it's the bathroom scene uh, when she was first talking to Ellie. Not when she, not when she was first talking to Ellie, but. It was a scene at school when she was talking to Ellie when they was walking in the hall and Rue hit, a, hit the uh, head on the door. I remember all these scenes vividly. And then one of the most important scenes we saw last week's episode at the wake where she was reading. Who was the only per who was the one person that we knew standing up there beside Rue while she was uh, reading this thing about her dad? Lexi. They they are making it a point to know like, hey, Lexi has been there for Rue, but we're going to see if Rue going to be there for Lexi. That's really going to come into play. Okay. Excuse me, I'm, I'm hungry or some shit. Go eat. Oh, uh, but like, yeah, I was like, damn. I'm like, I was looking at Cassie like, yeah, you right, but bitch, this ain't the conversation. Get your ass up out of here. Hell, you, you slut. Yeah, I said it. Fuck it. Oh, uh, but anyway, and then we we, we moving on uh, past her because I'm, I'm sick of talking about Cassie and her. Her, her wanna cry baby puppy dog. Don't get me wrong, and I have to say this too. I don't know if it's everybody or what, but everybody going for that Emmy in this show. Cause Jesus, we got a couple of more people just shining. Now before I get to the part that I love the most, I'm I'm gonna cut over to my girl Maddie because I thought Maddie finna get that little coochie play with in that pool. Y'all were thinking it too. First she was on the phone with Kat. Um, who who is just I, just just keep it real. I, I, Cat's terrible. You know what I'm saying? Cat she's Cat was one of my favorite characters, but the way Cat did Ethan is wrong. Now I personally personally understand where Cat's coming from because Cat's in a situation where she's dealing with some stuff internally, and I don't think it doesn't matter what the fuck Ethan does. Ethan's a great person. There were no cons to Ethan's character for Cat. That does not mean shit when you're fucked. You're fucked up in the head, and, and you're you don't feel like you're deserving of love. You, you don't feel like you're deserving of anybody to care for you none of that shit matter okay and that's what cat was feeling it's just the way cat tried to break up with him by putting by gaslighting him by putting shit on him it just it just made her look ugly you feel me and ethan caught on to the she's just like bro you know i just don't think this works now let me get up out here don't get me ethan finna cry in that car you can best believe Ethan finna cry in that damn car. Whenever he get in that, you know what I'm saying, that little, that, that, that little ride of his. He finna cry because he 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 was invested. Now, he put himself in that situation because she told him last season that one of us going to get hurt. He just said, I'm going to make sure it's me. Even though I, th I feel like both of them are hurt because Kat also feels like, damn, I just let go of somebody who was great to me. But... It's something when you're dealing with something internally, there's nothing you can do about it. But yeah, like I said, she was on the phone with my girl Maddie, and Maddie wanted to kill Cassie. But the thing I love the most about what they did with Maddie this this episode is the fact that they highlighted that Maddie was depressed. I think that is a that is a big, 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 
big element to this whole thing. Because I knew when she found out what happened with Cassie, she was going to want to beat Cassie's ass, obviously. But you have to think about once that comes down and the realization hits you that the person that you loved, because she really loved Nate, and the person, another person that you loved, who you cared about, who you, you literally confided all your information, who knows everything about you, you told who, who like, talk you through this damn relationship you had with this guy was the one who fucked him behind your back. So that shit going to fuck with you mentally. I think there's not a part of me that doesn't believe, like, Matt is kind of, like, looking down on herself right now. Because you we see the joy that she used to have when she was around that little boy that she was babysitting. She didn't have that same joy then. She was just kind of, like, going through the motion. That shit is fucking her. And then Samantha comes home, say, let's get drunk a little bit in the pool, and they talked about it. Samantha said, hey, man, I was your friend. I did that same shit. And, and Matt is like, what? I, 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 I fuck with you. How, how could you do something? She's like, yeah. He called me at a, at a, at a crazy time. It's like her and her friend never talked again. But I think this whole thing, like I said, initially I thought she was from a, Ease your mind real quick. I thought she was going to do some shit like that. But no. I feel like she was. She said it without saying it. Bro. All of this shit you're going through right now. Don't matter. Eventually you'll be past all this shit. Okay. Because I think that's something they, they, they don't realize. You're in high school. As much shit as you think. Like oh my god. This is the end of the world. It's the, uh, baby. The sun come up tomorrow. You know what I mean? Ain't, ain't nobody gonna remember none of that shit you did back then. If it ain't, if you ain't going to jail and that shit get put on your permanent record, who you fucked back then? That don't mean nothing. Who you fucking? Who who fucking who? Don't mean nothing eventually. Cause I think about all the shit I did in high school. None of that shit. None of it matter no more. Not a, not a lick of it. But when you're in that moment. And Matt even says this. She's just like, no, I don't think I'm, I'm wired that way. You, of course you think like that that way when you're in high school. You think this is the end all be all. And this everything right now is important. None of that shit. And that's essentially what Samantha was get, trying to get through to uh, to Matt. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and jump straight into that that, that next scene with Matt. Um, because Nate. Is going to look. He 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 realizes that the most important thing right now is this fucking tape. You know what I'm saying? If this tape gets out, no matter want to buy a house from us, our our family's kind of fucked. You know what I'm saying? Because our dad's name is on that shit. You feel me? So he he break. I don't know if Maddie got parents and they just decided to let him up there or or what it was. Or if he broke in there like he did Tyler's crib. We don't know. But that bitch was in there like some kind of super fit. This shit played like a scary movie. Because I honestly felt, I just felt weird watching it. This man in this bitch, like some kind of psycho murder killer, with a strap pointed at Matt. In the, no, I don't, I don't know how they, the way they shot this scene, I thought was fantastic. The way he leads Matt to the bed, Matt, like Matt, she's panicking. So the first thing she said, "I love you." He don't give a damn about that. He is in full villain mode. Okay. The, he is no longer Nate Jacob. This bitch done turned into the Joker in the killing joke when he shot Barbara Gordon in the fucking gut and crippled her ass. That's what that shit felt like to me. That's how uncomfortable it felt. Because he's leading her with this damn. I was like, I don't know if it was like 38. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? He's leading her with this revolver, sitting on the bed, laying her down. Sliding up her body. I'm just like, bro, this motherfucker sick. This motherfucker sick. How how are you comfortable doing this? Takes the book. He asking. Like, I'm like, mad at. Get a bitch the goddamn disc. Give it to him. Mad at like, I don't know what it said. You don't you want me to come give it to him for you? What is wrong? I, and I get, I think that, I think at that point, Matter was thinking, this is the last thing I have on this motherfucker. My best friend just betrayed me. And if I give up this disc, this is the only leverage I have. They both have scarred me. There's nothing else I can do to this guy. It don't, he don't have no friends. She can't go back and get her leg back and fuck one of his friends. None of that shit. 
She said this. This I, I, I think that's how her mindset was going. This is the last thing I have. Didn't fucking matter. He got he he started fucking like he was playing Russian roulette, bro. This motherfucker put the gun to the middle of her forehead, bro. She's crying. Shout out to Alexa Demon. Because I fucking act. Shout out to both of them, honestly. Because the acting in this scene was so damn good. As a, just a fan of the show, you can't help but just be immersed completely into this moment. Because of how uncomfortable it feels. It just feels just just wrong, man. It just feels so wrong and just disturbing, dog. Because, like, one thing I've said is that Maddie is a strong, fierce woman, okay? That's been no secret. Not only is she all of that, she's also a protector. Out of all her friends, she's the one that looks out for the other one. If some shit pop off, Maddie's the one who's going to step up. But in this case, there is nobody there to protect her. She has no defenders, okay? Nate has a gun to her. Cassie betrayed her. Cat's going through her own shit. Ruth's dead her own drugs. There is no one there. And I mean, Drew is also doing it like, like her own this shit. But there's no one there as a protector for Maddie because she's always been there. And there's a part of me who feels like the tr the real Maddie, the true one, is the one we see in episode two when she's just chilling with the little boy. You know what I'm saying? Having fun with him. You know what I'm saying? That's the one we get to see. I mean, that's the one... Uh, th that's who she really is. We don't we don't really get to see that because she always has to be tough, you know what I'm saying, for herself and for people around her. But this, Nate just stripped all that shit away. And now she's just a fragile little girl, you know what I'm saying, who's afraid for her life. This some bitch put the gun up to his head and started click, kick. Fuck, Diesel, get, get your shit together. He started clicking that bit while simultaneously, simultaneously, did I say that shit right? Because if I didn't say that shit right, it's going to come through clear in this mic and y'all going to be on my, You get what I'm saying? At the same time, kissing her against her will. She can't fucking do shit. She can't do nothing. He is kissing her while clicking a fucking gun to his damn head. He let that bitch go twice. I'm thinking to myself, boy, this bitch crazy because if that son bitch go off, yeah, he going to be dead, but she going to be traumatized forever even though that's still the fucking case. Nate Jacobs, there are some just villains or just TV villains that are just just bad or they're just villains in general. Okay, I think of Javier Bardem in uh, No Country for All Men. I think of uh, Joffrey from fucking Game of Thrones. I think of Ramsey from Game of Thrones. Nate Jacobs is up there with them people, bro. He gives me those kind of vibes. We somebody call in the Avengers. Somebody please call in the Avengers. Call in the Avengers, Captain Planet. Somebody. Somebody, man. Because the ass whooping Fez gave him just was not enough. And Fez has no connections to matter, so he's not like a Fez from the ride for him. This man has to be stopped. Somebody spray his truck up. I need to somebody hey man. Swing that stick at that boy. Cause we can't keep letting this shit go down. That 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 whole scene was just insanity to me. And he left. He just like oh, there was there was no bullets in that. That don't. I'm a, I'm gonna tell y'all a story. I put this on my life. I had a revolver in high school, bro. I used to carry that bitch to school. One day I was walking home from school, man. Let me let me tell you, I I had no bullets in that bitch that day. I was spinning that bitch. And put it up the people's head. Do you know them bitches went to the principal to, to uh, uh, on me the next day? The next day, them bitches went to the principal on me. You hear me? They started checking my locking shot. Just don't have them bring that bitch to school that day. But you know what? If I would have got caught, bitch, I deserve it. Because that ain't nothing you fucking do to nobody. And I was just doing it as a fucking joke. This, this nigga Nate was serious. I apologize to them. I didn't apologize. And I got mad at them boy for snitching on me. But I know I know the error of my ways. Now, see, that's what I'm saying. We, we better than the worst shit we've done. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm just saying, bro, you don't. 
I know I'm, I'm just sticking on this one thing, and I know y'all ready move, for me to move past, but, bro, that scene right there is so damn just fucked up, man. Just so fucked up. Lord have mercy. He gets the disc, obviously, and my girl Lexi, I mean, not Lexi, Matt is just curled up. She's just curled up, and, like, he, I, I, I legitimately think he broke her. I do, I, she probably won't come out for a while. Because I don't see how she can shake back. She has no one to defend her. I hope they introduce like a third party or something. Or we get um uh little Meech, um who who Travis. Maybe she starts talking to Travis and Travis hears about that shit. Maybe hopefully Travis a gangster. I'm hoping Travis a gangster. Please let Travis be a gangster. Him and Matter have something and he spin on Nate. Because one is Black History Month, and I need Travis to do it. Come on, Travis. Get Lil' Meech back in this bitch. I need Travis to spin the block on they wet this shit up. Fuck it. Now, he ends up calling Jules and talking to Jules. Jules coming out of the crib with a box cutter because she knows something. And let me tell you how this... The bitch evil. Nate Jacobs is evil, but the bitch is also smart. He could have easily... Said Matt had this dish. But you know what? His intentions weren't there. His intentions were for Jules. He told Jules everything that happened with his dad and all of that shit. And it was to let, I know it was to, for Jules to let her guard down. <laughs> because I think he still has feelings for Jules. Because if you, and I think Jules, as much as she hates him, something is there. Because the one person Jules can, well, I ain't gonna say the one person, because Jules was out here fucking. But the person Jules really ignored Rufa was Tyler, aka Nate. And they both, he, he even said, like, for the record, everything I said it was true. And she said, same. I don't know if she meant the stuff she was saying in the messages was true. Or how she fucking hates him. He's a terrible person. It's true. But you see when she go back to the. When she leaves the truck. And she's going back to the house. She has a pause. And she turns around and looks at it. Now. It's raining outside. You had to really want to do that. Now I'm thinking something could be. That, I've said this. Jules is the only person that can take Nate away from Cassie. But I think. Boy that would. I don't, I don't even know how I, I would feel. I know a lot of people already don't like Jules. I'll be on the Jules hate train too. I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. Fuck that. No. Hell no. Hell no. But I well, I, I do think something's going to happen. Because Jules, she go, obviously goes in and she watches the tape. And uh, she sees herself. I mean, like she, she sees herself. That's what she did. You feel me? Like, yeah, it's rude. I mean, that, yeah, Jules, you 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 was fucking. And I think, but I also think that's Jules reflecting on a person she doesn't want to be anymore. You know what I'm saying? Because you accompany that with the fact that she fucked. I, I'm assuming she fucked Elliot. Uh, and when she left Rue and went and fucked up the up the other girl. You know what I'm saying? I think in, Jules legit might be star reflecting on. A person that she used to be that she don't want to be no more. I could be wrong, but we'll see. Now, hold on, hold on now, <laughs> hold on now. Cause this way it get good. Oh shit. Oh yeah, y'all y'all know know what this is. I'm, I'm getting ready to go on stage now. What's my song? Turn turn me up the headphones a little bit. Stand by me, cause you're all I need. Bitch, we in this motherfucker now, bitch. We in this. I told y'all. I told y'all. The one thing we was waiting for. The one thing I was waiting for. Is that motherfucking Fez and Lexi, people. Can we get a hand clap of applause? I love it. I love it. Now, I know this happened a little bit early in the episode. Now, I, I kind of like, hey, hell, y'all here for 30 minutes before I talked about it. But that's what I've been waiting on. 
My boy Fez go chilling, talking about she, My girl Alexa was ready. Go chill with Fez. Go tell him about the play and shit. You know what I'm saying? What the play was based off of. And we obviously know what this play has been based off of. Like, the friends uh, following, I mean, uh, uh, the girlfriends who are growing apart. He said, what you should put in there is when I beat that ass. Yeah, yeah, put that shit in there, girl. You heard me? I'm, I'm, I'm just, okay, okay, okay. Let me chill out. Let me chill out. But I, I just enjoyed this because these are two, these are my two favorite characters. And I and like that connection that they had in episode one and the, the hint of it or what they were going to possibly be in episode two. I've been waiting for this, my boy. And it was such a, it just felt so wholesome. Because if you really just look at it, all the stuff that Fez has gone through in his entire life and the stuff that he's even into right now. And then the fact that nobody's ever really like paid attention to Lexi until this guy comes along who pays her nothing but attention. You know what I'm saying? Like really like show tells her like, yo, you should really value your fucking self because you fucking awesome. You know what I'm saying? I love that shit. So when now she's looking at herself in a different light. You feel me more? It's not even that she's getting validation from somebody else. I think she's just starting to like real, realize the value of herself. And I just like the, they have a connection in this movie. Stand by me was one of the best. Um, I mean, I think a lot of people know it's like a classic or whatever, whatever but it's one of my favorite uh, coming of age stories as well. So I like this whole connection between these two characters. And they just chilling. Fred's got the bleeds in one hand, and he just leans over, like just the, the, the gaze that they gave each other, and just he just grabs a hand, and that's it. It didn't need nothing too crazy. It didn't need them to like kiss. We didn't need them to fuck none of that. It's just them. It's just a vibe. You feel me? Now, granted, I think that whole thing gonna get snatched away because let's be honest, there's no fucking happy endings in this show, and so we can already transition into like the the seas of everything else because cut. Color the whole ass show up while Faye is outside taking a trash shot. And Mouse is up. I mean, not Mouse. Uh, Astro is over there. Why am I acting like I got a blunt in my hand? Why did, what, what the fuck was that? I act like I had a blunt in my hand. Then I like I threw it. I, I don't know. Y'all give me a pass for that. I told y'all it's brain cells, though. We get the moment in which, um, like I said, Astro is watching the security. But I think there's a blind spot. And, and and Cutler knows that, okay? So Cutler's talking to Faye or whatever outside. And he tells her basically like he's cooperating. He didn't even know what the fuck cooperate mean. But he's going to show up and he's going to wear a wire. Now, so he just want her to chill whenever he do that. I feel like Faye on some hood shit. You know what I'm saying? Faye's got on, a, I think, a, not necessarily got on anybody's nerve, but everybody's just like, why the fuck is she here? This was her purpose. This was Faye's purpose for for Faye. I think Faye's gonna eventually like eye color, you know what I'm saying? So nothing happens to my boy Fesco. Now I do have a theory on some other shit, and I get to that in just a minute. But like, yeah, I think this was a very very necessary scene. You know what I'm saying? Um, because I don't really feel like there was love between Cutler and Faye. You feel me? The, for the most part, Faye was. I mean, Cutler was out here. He was selling a little bit of dope. Yeah, man. Faye, I mean, obviously, she on dope like crazy. You know what I'm saying? She probably needed a hit. Didn't have no money. Sucked on color dick. He ain't even never had no pussy. Probably ain't never had no hit. Fell in love with her off of that. You know what I'm saying? Off them fish lips. And now he pretty, that's pretty much been it. He's like, hey, I'll be your, I'll be your man. And she was just like, oh, I can get free shit off this motherfucker. Hell yeah, shit. I'm, I'm, I swear I'm running this. You know what I'm saying? That's why, that's why I feel like their relationship is. I don't know. I could be wrong. You know, so she might actually fear for him because she came back in. She didn't say nothing then when she came back in. You know what I mean? So I, I could be wrong, but uh, I, I, I don't. I see Fez getting away from that. I don't. But I ultimately think he's still gonna have to pay for that. Uh, them dope that Rue got, and 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 not in a in a fast, not in a uh, a sweet fast. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's 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 just my belief. But uh, closing out the episode, we ended up at the table. You know what I'm saying? And and we've talked about this earlier. I talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, Ali asked Gia, just like, you think we're going to get clean? She's like, right, if, it, if it's real, yeah. yeah. I want it to be, you know what I'm saying? But we don't, we don't know. You know, like I said, Ruth still hasn't been tested. She, I mean, she's trying to do good. But what's, what's she going to do when she get around some dope or, or some pills or some, some fin? You know what I'm saying? 
Also, she still has to pay this woman back. There's a lot of shit Ruth still got on her plate. Rather than uh, getting clean is one thing, but she got a lot of other stuff. But I just like to leave just like, yo, let this girl be mad at her sister, you know? And her, because her mama, she was only, she only sees one way. She only thinks like you can, the only way Ruth can get through this is with like love and compassion. And Ali like, nah, you gotta, you gotta also like, if Ruth gonna get clean, she gonna do it on her own. You gotta like call, you gotta be able to call her out on that shit. And that's why I like the way Ruth. I mean, he get when he first came in, he was like joking, like right, you know, get your like little, you know, little dope fiend ass or, or whatever he called her. You know what I'm saying? Out, out of here. You know what I'm saying? I like that. You know, and I like the fact that G, G was able actually to explore her feelings because if not, I mean. You can be worried about this one person over here and what they going through. But somebody else who might not portray or display their feelings the same way could be going through something worse over here on this side. So, And he tells her, like, hey, you, you have to give love to that little one because she's been waiting on it. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, shout out to Ali. Ali might still get that ass. At first, I didn't think he was after Ruth did that shit. I thought they were pretty much done. I thought him getting that, getting less like, I thought, that boy still might get that meat, man. That boy might get that meat. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to see. We're going to see. Um, <laughs> But, yeah, and, and and probably the most crushing scene, well, one of the most crushing scenes is obviously the mom on the phone. Uh, The mom on the phone with the people trying to get, because to me that that felt like a mother not not just pleading for a room to for a child to get better. It felt like a mother pleading for a child's life. And I'm not a parent, you know what I'm saying? But that just it just it scared me a lot. Like it's it scared me a lot. Just just hearing that I'm just like, damn. I can imagine dealing with something like this. I couldn't imagine like going through like you know, like begging for somebody to help me save my child's life, and and they just kind of just like you know, yeah, I've seen that that type of person before. Like it's just it's crushing. Now I also kind of skipped the fact that Nate just called Castle like, hey, I'm about to be outside, and she just left. I've seen it. I've seen. I've known people who've done that before. Who just like allowed them kids to their kids to go stay with their boyfriend and girlfriends that they're other parents house and shit like that so that that wasn't too surprising to me especially just considering how uh cassie and lexi's mom is she seems pretty lenient and she, i mean her dad their dad walked out so it just to me it's gonna be something we might explore with her character just like i'll let another person walk out or, or something like that i don't know you know what i'm saying but we're gonna see and and obviously uh sweet pussy marshall didn't have no problem with it. she's like i mean yeah we 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 saw how lenient they was already when and they were being the brains I cast a couple uh, episodes ago and they were just dying there. I heard and Cal just like, damn, I remember those days when we used to do shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really see too much. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I ain't gonna say not an issue, but they don't, they don't, they don't really care. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, um, bro, uh, another amazing episode. <laughs> I legitimately thought I was gonna do like 15 minutes today. Something about me said, I said, man, it's going to be like 15, 20 minutes. And when I got to the 20-minute mark, I'm like, I ain't got that much left. I did a whole nother 20. How? I don't, I don't even know what. And I didn't even get to, like, my whole prediction because I feel like there is a moment coming. And, well, I guess I, I do my, like, my prediction video sooner this week. Uh, instead of it coming out late this week, I'm actually going to just upload it tomorrow. Like, the, my promo reactions. Uh, cause I, you know, I don't, I don't watch the promos after the episodes. I typically try to, excuse me, try to wait like the mid, midway through the week to like upload those. So I do that, um, probably tomorrow. Just go ahead and get it out the way. You feel me? So, you know what I'm saying? I can get my thoughts on that. But yeah, uh, just great. Just greatness, man. So, 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 so much great acting from all of these guys. I like how chaotic did everything felt, how it was jump back from between. Uh, different storylines and and now I think more so than any other time I'm really clueless as to what happens next because Nate is at this at this point Nate is untouchable there's nothing anybody has on him his dad's gone Matt is uh uh find out about him and Cassie 
the, and he got the disc. There's nothing that he he's the villain. It's, it feels like the villain has won right now. That's what it honestly feels like. And I'm so concerned about Maddie and like just her, just her mental health right now because I know it probably it's probably a wreck, you know. So. Yeah, man, and uh, there's there's so much to wonder about every single last one of these characters, I, I, and I'm still ready to see what this play is gonna be because I think that is going to be something crazy. I think she's still gonna have a rewrite, but with Ethan at the center, like Ethan probably gonna, hey, can we can we change something up? You know what I'm saying? Because I, I think Ethan wants wants his leg back on uh on Cat, but yeah, more than anything, I still I, I want Maddie to get her leg back because I think um. That character deserves so much better, so much better, man, than what she's got. You know what I'm saying? Not not from the story, it's just from from how she's been treated by people close to her, and I hate that for her. But uh, yeah, you guys, let me know what y'all thought about this review uh, down in the, or this episode down in the comments. Hit that like button, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching the vid. Sorry for the long review again, man. It is what it is. It is what it is. I'll catch up with you guys later. Peace.